go through that strategy and go through uh, how it works and when you come, you know, maybe you'll override that portfolio manager or not, but what, what's the checklist you kind of go through? Uh, so we look for very high quality businesses. Uh, what we describe as simple, predictable, free cash flow generative, dominant businesses, a, a business that Warren Buffett would describe as having a moat around it, right? If you, if you believe that the value of anything, financial, is the present value of the cash you can take out of it over its life, well, you need to know what, how much cash is going to generate over its life. So, the, so business quality to us is the single most important uh, criterion for determining what's interesting. Because if, if we can't predict the cash flows, we don't know what it's worth. If we don't know what it's worth, we can't invest. So we figure out what it's worth, figure out how good the business is, how predictable will this cash flows be from a railroad or a spirits company or a real estate company, a shopping mall business. Uh, and then we say, uh, okay, well, where's it trading? Um, and if there's a wide gap between price and value, uh, you can buy it for 50 cents, it's worth $1.20, well, then we're going to take a hard look and try to understand why it trades at a deep discount. And uh, once we understand the reasons, we decide, well, are these things that we can solve. You know, or can we, in light of the situation, uh, the circumstances, can we be influential in changing these, these levers that can cause this valuation discrepancy to narrow? And is this a business that, while we're causing the valuation discrepancy to narrow, we can also perhaps contribute to the valuation growing? Uh, and if those things are true, we found something that looks quite interesting for us. And um, usually this investment philosophy, does it take a week, a month, three months to do the research, a year? I mean, you have 10 names. What, how long? It depends. I mean, one of the best investments we ever made uh, took us four hours to do the work. Uh, it was during the financial crisis. Which uh, was that? Uh, Wachovia Corporation. Okay. So um, I was on my Blackberry uh, eating breakfast uh, at the Brooklyn Diner uh, in front of my building, and there was a story went across the, uh, I was just, you know, re you know, Wall Street Journal headline, uh, Reuters headline, excuse me, uh, went across saying, um, <laughs> that Citigroup uh, to acquire the Wachovia banking subsidiaries for $2 in Citigroup stock. Stock was halted. And this was kind of an interesting transaction because they were buying the subsidiaries for Citigroup stock. I figured, hmm, this is interesting. What happens to the holding company? So I went back to the, you know, kind of went upstairs to the office and, you know, cracked open the 10K and, and uh, another member of the team, Mick McGuire, uh, uh, he and I worked on it. And uh, what was interesting is the 1,000-page 10K of Wachovia Corporation, I think 900 pages were on the banking subsidiary. There was fewer than 100 pages on the holding company. And by buying the banking subsidiary, Citi was leaving a holding company which had cash, um, you know, in Wachovia Securities, uh, A.G. Edwards, they had paid six, seven billion for it six months before, um, Evergreen Asset Management, and they were taking a $27 billion uh, loss on the sale of the subsidiary. And uh, it, it also had a liability called non-cumulative perpetual preferred stock which if you ever want to have a liability in your life, this is the single greatest uh, liability to have. It's a, it's a form of equity where you never have to pay a dividend, and when you don't pay them, they don't accumulate, right. and the worst case is they get a couple directors on the board, and you say hi to them each meeting, and uh, you have this very, and I said, look, this could be the, our, our Berkshire Hathaway. And uh, at the end of the day, we figured the asset, you know, in four hours, we determined the holding company was worth at least 11 to $14 cash, a tax refund that you could, you know, you could carry back the $27 billion uh, loss, recover cash taxes that have been paid. So you have this cash vehicle, you don't Wachovia Securities, which is a you know, good wealth management business. Mm -hmm. You don't A.G. Edwards, another interesting yeah. uh, asset. You, these are businesses you know well. And uh, the stock opened after it was halted at $1.84. So we said, look, it's worth you know, 11 to 14, $1.84. We bought 42% of the volume for the next four days. And then it was acquired by, then Wells came in and put in a topping bid of $7 in Wells Fargo stock, which wasn't actually a topping bid. But the Wells Fargo deal did not require government assistance. Right. So I think Sheila Bear liked that. Yeah, I remember that. Liked we, that I actually better. interviewed Sheila Bear sure. for our show. 